Hello, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to another You Made What. Today, I am going to be making a giant peanut butter and jelly cake. Here it is. Basically, this is a cake mold that makes your cake into the shape of a slice of bread so you can make a sandwich that is really cake. So the recipe I'm going to be using is the one that's included with the mold and it is for a peanut butter and jelly pound cake. Before we get into this, there's a little bit of history about peanut butter and jelly or PB&J as it's known here in America. Let's begin with sliced bread. Sliced bread was invented around the turn of the last century. There was machines that could mechanize the process of slicing bread and also keep bread from getting stale by wrapping it. For about 1920, you could get sliced bread. The Incas and the Aztecs were grinding up peanuts as peanut butter way back but it wasn't really consumed by a lot of Americans until the 1900s, and even in the 1920s, it was still considered a high-end food. Next, we have jelly. Jelly has been around for a long time, but the entire package of peanut butter and jelly in a sandwich form didn't really become popular until after the war. So that's a little brief history of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that is totally iconically American. And if by chance you like these experimental weird recipes, be sure to subscribe for more making. All right, let's go ahead and make this. So in a large bowl, combine two cups of flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of salt, and whisk that all together. Next, we're gonna need six egg whites, and this is how I like to separate them. I just like to crack my egg into a bowl and just use my impeccably clean hands and scoop up the yolk. To our egg whites, we are gonna add three quarters of a cup of milk and whisk that to combine. In a stand mixer, we're gonna add three quarters of a cup of softened butter and one half cups of sugar. And we're gonna beat this for a few minutes until it's nice and light and fluffy. So after about five minutes, your butter and sugar mixture should look nice and light like this. And then you're gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Okay, now we're ready to add our dry and wet ingredients, and we're gonna do this in four additions, and we're just gonna alternate. Add your flour first, mix, then add some of your wet, and then mix until all of the flour and milk mixture is combined. We're gonna prep our pan by giving a good spray of baking spray, and then pour your batter in and flatten the top. Then we're gonna bake in a preheated 315 degree oven for 60 to 70 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Then we're gonna let the cake rest for about an hour before we unmold it. When we're ready to get the cake out, we're gonna give the mold a little stretch, and then place a plate or a rack on top, quickly invert it, and then just pull the mold away. To make our peanut butter filling, we're gonna take a quarter cup of softened butter and place that into a stand mixer. Then we're gonna add a half a cup of creamy peanut butter. And then whip that until it's really nicely incorporated. When everything is nice and smooth and creamy, we're gonna add three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar. Lastly, we're gonna finish it off with a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and then give it one more little whip. Next, we're gonna make our cake look like bread by slicing the domed part of the cake off. I found the easiest way to get a nice flat top is to rotate the cake while slicing around the perimeter of the cake. I mean, come on, how stinking cute is that? <laughs> Next, we're gonna form two slices of bread by slicing the cake in half. Then we're going to generously slather the bottom slice with our peanut butter frosting. Next, we're gonna to top the peanut butter frosting with a half a cup of slightly warm jelly. Place our second slice of bread on top and now you've got a giant peanut butter and jelly sandwich cake. It's really hard to get a sense of how big this is unless you have it next to my face like this. I would say it's at least four or five times larger than a regular slice of bread. <laughs> it's so funny. Here, there it is. So before I even have this, I have to confess that I am not a huge peanut butter and jelly fan, not because of its flavors, but I just didn't grow up eating them. I can count on one hand how many times I've actually had a peanut butter and jelly <laughs> sandwich. But I'm super excited to taste it in cake form. Let's give a taste of the pound cake first, just by itself. Itadakimasu. 
Mmm. Mm hmm. And that pound cake is delicious, perfectly sweetened, and a really nice balance of dense, sweet pound cake with kind of an airy lightness as well. It has a pronounced butter flavor with a nice little injection of vanilla in there. Delicious. All right, let's try it all together with the peanut butter and the jelly. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Initially, it was very sweet because I think I just got a filling bite in the beginning, but then as I kind of combined it with the cake, it was really good. It makes it taste much more like a cake rather than just a peanut butter and jelly sandwich because you do have two slices of pound cake and then you have this filling that's more like a frosting. It's not just peanut butter, but it's sweetened, enriched peanut butter, and I'm really impressed with this recipe. The cake was delicious and it's the perfect homage to the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but in the form of cake. If you love peanut butter and jelly and you love cake, you must try this recipe. And you certainly don't need this mold to make this recipe as well. You could easily do it in a brownie pan. All right, I hope you guys enjoy that. I hope you guys learned something. Don't forget to leave me a comment, subscribe and like, and I shall see you in my next video. Toodaloo, take care, bye. A good amount for one burrito, I think. So then we're gonna roll this pad boy up. And this is a bottle of Hachinoko. So Hachinoko are bee larva. And there they are. <laughs>